In this video, we're gonna see how to render Razor components outside of ASP.NET Core. Normally, Razor components are rendered within the context of an HTTP request. So the browser sends a request to the server. On the server, the request is routed to a Razor component and the Razor component executes on the server to produce HTML and that HTML is added to the response and sent to the browser. Now Blazor in .NET 8 lets us render Razor components outside the context of an HTTP request or ASP.NET Core. For example, we can have a console app that renders a Razor component to a HTML fragment as a string or stream. We can then use this HTML fragment to generate email content or static site content or to build a content templating engine. Let's now create a console application to demonstrate this feature. Let's start Visual Studio 2022 preview. Click New Project. Choose Console App from the project templates and click Next. Give the project a name. Say Render Razor Component and click Next. Make sure .NET 8 Preview is selected and click Create. Now we need to install two NuGet packages. So right click the project in Solution Explorer and click Manage NuGet Packages. Click the Browse tab and check this Include Pre-release checkbox and search for microsoft.aspnetcore.components.web NuGet package. Make sure it's at version 8.0 and click install. Now let's install another NuGet package called microsoft.extensions.logging. Once again, make sure it's at version 8.0 and click install. Now let's go to the project file by double clicking the project name. Here we need to update the project to use the Razor SDK. So in the SDK attribute here, add the suffix .razor. So we are setting the project SDK to microsoft.net.sdk.razor. Let's save the file. Now let's create a Razor component. Right click the project and click add new item. Name the component renderday.razor. This component will show the current day of week. So create a top level heading H1 with the text today is and below that create a H3 element and inside that use the razor syntax to evaluate a C-sharp expression. So use at datetime.now.day of week and save the file. And now let's go to the program.cs class file where we'll write the logic to render the razor component to HTML. In order to do that, we need to use HTML renderer that is present in microsoft.aspnet.core.components.web namespace. If you go to the definition of the class, we can see that it provides a mechanism for rendering Razor components as HTML markup. Its constructor takes two parameters, one iService provider and another iLogger factory. So first, let's set up dependency injection. We'll create a new instance of service collection bring microsoft.extensions.dependency injection namespace in and call services.addLogging and then create an instance of iServiceProvider by calling services.buildServiceProvider and create an instance of iLoggerFactory from the service provider by calling service.providerGetRequiredService of iLoggerFactory then create an instance of HTML renderer like so passing in the service provider and logger factory. Now we can render a Razor component by calling render component async on the HTML renderer, but that call should be made in the context of calling invoke async on a component dispatcher. So let's say var HTML equals await HTML renderer dot dispatcher dot invoke async and pass in an async lambda expression. And inside that we can say var output equals await html renderer dot render component async passing in the type of the component as a generic type argument make sure we include the namespace and as an argument to the method pass in parameter view dot empty and again we need the namespace microsoft dot aspinet code dot components then let's return output dot to html string and let's end that with a semicolon and finally, let's call console.writeLine passing in the HTML we just created. Now let's run our application. 
we can see a rendered markup on the current day.